Saint Augustine of Canterbury is a very interesting character actually. Um, he spent only eight years evangelizing England when he arrived with 30 other monks and were sent there by Pope Gregory the Great um, to help convert to Jesus Christ uh, the, the tough and the quite a, a violent Saxon country at the time. Um, and as you know, his mission was pretty much based at Canterbury where that powerful cathedral still stands to this day. Um, but the work that they carried out was really interesting, everybody, because before Augustine, there were actually Christians there in England, or in England before him, but they seemed to have been met with great hostility and uh, uh, anger by the, 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 Sac the local Saxon lords at the time. And so a lot of them went into hiding, particularly through Wales and then, of course, down towards Cornwall. So we're kind of in hiding, essentially. But the Pope Gregory the Great, he felt it was time to start evangelizing that country again and give it another go because he didn't want to leave it to its own pagan demise. So Augustus set out with 30 other monks and arrived in England. And they discovered that with all those barbaric stories of the Saxons, it wasn't as hostile as they originally had taught. The king had met Augustine and the 30 monks. He wasn't that hostile to the Christian faith because he began to know a little bit more about it with the Christians who were already there, more or less. Um, but what was really interesting here, buddy, is that the king heard him out. He was impressed by what they were saying. So he said, go ahead, preach away. I won't stop you. And so they did. But he said, under one condition, as long as you do not force or coerce people into converting to Christianity. Of course, as you know, he spent about, spent about eight years in England and the Saxon king himself actually converted uh, during that time. Um, but what was brilliant about that is that even though the king became, was baptized, unlike other kings who would have forced all their subjects to do the same, he didn't. He didn't. He left that judgment to the people themselves if they wanted to become Christian or not or stay in the pagan ways. Um, but nonetheless, Many of them were baptized, of course, as we know. But what I found really interesting here, buddy, is that apparently Augustine, he, 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 was, he found far more success with the pagans than he did with the Christians who were already there, which is really interesting than the, the older Christians who had been there previously. He had found that those Christians had stayed far away from the practices of Rome the whole time. And apparently he met with them again and again and again, trying to get them back into the fold but they became really obstinate, didn't want it. As, as if they, they, they preferred kind of a isolation and bitterness over a community of Christians and reconciliation, which can tell an awful lot about Christians if we're not careful. Um, I think there's a great lesson, everybody, for what Augustine and the 30 monks did. Um, because like I've been saying before, we're, we are facing, I think, a new apostolic era here in the West. And if anyone who's paying attention to what's going on, particularly in the online world at the moment, really, really interesting phenomena starting to take place all over the world at the moment, especially in Western countries, where it appears there's a large number of conversions to Christianity, particularly to Roman Catholicism, starting to take place among some major online celebrities, which is very interesting. Um, and it appears that the atheistic generations that grew up with the likes of Richard Dawkins and those staunch 80s of the late 90s and the early 2000s, those people are now realizing that that, that that really aggressive atheism left them and is leaving them with no hope, no sense of meaning in their lives. And they're asking major questions. Why are we here? Does God exist? If so, how can we prove it? Or can we prove it? Um, really interesting ways, and it seemed to be starting to turn towards Jesus in a very real way. And unfortunately, friends, there seems to be a bit of a flip side going on at the moment, where a lot of Christians who would consider themselves as religious, you know, and good disciples of Jesus, of course, they seem to be replacing their religion um, with political wokeness, all right? uh, with an unhealthy activism of worship of the earth. You know, faith for a lot of for faith in Christ for many Christians now seems to be replacing this with a false virtue of tolerance, tolerating everything, tolerating anything, whether it's evil or not, it doesn't matter. We're all supposed to be tolerating everything at the end of the day, which is leading to friends a culture that's demoralized and people that we seem to be more and more filled with anger of their country, their history, and even humanity. 
And as a result, friends, I think we're facing, are going to face quite a similar way of what Augustine and those guys faced when they landed in, landed in England back in the year six, in the 600s. You know, where mediocre Christians of the West who think they know what the gospel and Jesus is all about, they're going to be very difficult to truly convert to the Lord, uh, rather uh, than those who do profess themselves as atheists or even humanists, um, who seem to be coming to Jesus without force, without coercion, which is really interesting. Um, and they're doing so, like I said, based on basic intellectual questions about the question, the existence of God, meaning of life, who am I, what is a man, what is a woman, Really interesting stuff. Um, I suppose, friends, in other words, the times we're living in is really interesting. And I have to say, they're quite exciting times if we really are paying attention to it. It's great to be a follower of Christ in today's world because we are entering a whole new apostolic era. Um, you know, like Augustine, indeed, many of those really great missionary saints that are dotted throughout the history of the church, that nothing less than a gentle yet a, a firm presentation of the salvation of the gospel and the saving love of Jesus you know why the same time being men and women who genuinely open our hearts to God's Holy Spirit to transform us from the inside out interior life is so so important if that's not nourished we're up we're in trouble you know you know men and women like you know who are convinced by our encounter with the risen Jesus and nothing less who are very clear spiritually and culturally what we should be and shouldn't tolerate. Uh, and only then, I think, friends, it'll suffice to effectively re-evangelize the post-Christian West. And Ireland is one of those countries. So please, friends, pray for the new evangelization which is already taking place in Ireland. St. Augustine of Canterbury, pray for us.